Welcome to both of you. Uh, Jean, my first question is to you. First of all, uh, can you introduce yourself uh, to the audience and also introduce uh, us to CTO? I'm not sure any, everyone is aware of what is CTO. Thank you, Fabien. Great show. <laughs> Hi, everyone. My name is Jean Ornin, and um, I uh, run CTO, which is a company which, uh, which was created 30 years ago by consumer good companies to reduce the environmental impact of their packaging under what we called extended producer responsibility. So in France, there are about 50,000 consumer good companies investing each year over 1 billion euro through CTO to reduce, to reuse, to collect, to sort, and to recycle packaging. Big companies, the big names, and also very small companies taking the responsibility, which enables us to recycle 72% of our packaging. We still have a long way to go. And myself, I've been running this company for the past seven years, and I happen to be a former athlete. I was in the French national volleyball team, and uh, so very concerned about sports and environment. Thank you, Jean. And can you tell us why you're here to talk about sport and why you collaborate with major sporting events like Paris 24, for example? Well, because the sport has a huge impact on people, mm -hmm. and we're here to change. Yeah. And an impact from the very bottom. Uh, in France, there are about 160,000 amateur sports club, all these young guys. And it's a place for education, where they respect values, living together. And this is a topic of how are we going to live together and protect this planet in the future. So it's a great educational topic. We need to learn how to eco-design our life on a daily basis. And the second is that, you know, athletes are role models. You know, if you're asking Kylian Mbappe to sort his bottle or his can, put it on a video, you know, everyone's going to do it. And then it's also a place where, you know, through big uh, events like the Olympics, um, you gather many people, you know, the citizens, the sports organizations, the industry, everyone. And it's a great occasion. I'm very grateful that what Georgina is doing, because as an athlete, having Olympic Games with such environmental goals, it's the best of both worlds. We have big games and, you know, respect the planet. We need it. And it's urgent. Thank but you, Jean. Georgina, uh, coming to you, I mean, why do you work with CTO and what's the, what's the rationale behind? Well, we're very thankful as well for, for CTO and for how CTO helps us advance because um, we believe as, as an event, there's a unique opportunity, you know, to take all this positive energy, all this, you know, celebration as an opportunity to change behavior as well. And, you know, we were interested in working with organizations who were there before us and who will be there after us. You know, once the, the, you know, the closing ceremony is finished, we are gone, right? So whatever we do, we'll hopefully continue to live in organizations that continue to exist. And, and so, first of all, we didn't need to invent uh, the will because we were already working with the best. And then, hopefully, whatever we manage to progress together uh, will remain after the games. Right. And can you share with us concrete action? How do you collaborate together in helping to change people's behaviors? Yes. Um, well, Georgina explained earlier that uh, it's such a big event with so many equipments and goods. And as far as packaging is concerned, millions and millions of uh, meals and people who are going to drink, eat, 
So using packaging. So we need to do less, better, <laughs> For longer. and longer. So what we try to do is to help Georgina reaching that goal with the companies involved in the, in the games. Uh, so the first part is eco-design. How do we help companies eco-design their packaging? So we help uh, Georgina publish the first guide in the world ever <laughs> of eco-design <laughs> of the packaging of the goods at the Olympics. First of all, how do you do less? How do you make it more recyclable? How can you make it more reusable? So that's the first step. Then we're helping them through our contacts with the municipalities and the venues to help all the spectators, everyone which is going to be on the Olympics, well, to deal with their waste. So, you know, I, I'm coming from the airport, I'm coming from the subway, on the venues, I need a solution to sort my can, my bottle, whatever. And uh, we need to place this all over the place in order to recycle and to go into a circular economy. So that's something that we help. And in fact, in the job we do on the daily basis, we are working with the municipalities all over France. So we're working with Paris, but with everyone. So we try with Georgina to put them around the table to work together and find solutions because it involves many, many people. That's what we're trying to do. It's our small piece, but everyone needs to, de to, to do its small piece if we want to reach the big change. Well, it's, it's not such a small piece, by the way, <laughs> because at least it's one of the most visible ones. You know, I think you probably went through the experience of arriving into a different country and trying to sort things. Yeah. But even within the city, you know, within France, uh, every time you want to sort, you say, well, where do I put my stuff, right? So this idea of trying to homogenize the instructions you give to people on where to put things. I mean, it may seem silly, but actually, it has never been done as such. So this is what we're trying, fingers crossed. You know, there will be some sort of homogenization of this sorting for the game so that we can help spectators, but visitors in general, also to uh, find uh, an easier way to sort their waste. And are you planning to also leverage the power of athletes to really amplify that message towards the spectators and the fans? Yeah, I mean, for, sorry, for athletes, we need to create the conditions for them, first of all, to experience that these games are different, Yeah. right? And once they can experience these games are different, then they can obviously help us spread the word, you know, right. and, and, and share it uh, in their respective countries, among their respective fun uh, <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. set, uh, so that everyone can understand not only that this has been done or what has been done, but it can be done elsewhere. Nothing of what we are doing um, requires a lot of resources. Nothing is so expensive that nobody can do it. No, we're trying to really be more frugal. And, and this is something anybody can do, right? Jean, you want to add something? <laughs> no, it's just, I was, uh, my eyes were shining thinking about all these athletes we're going to have and, uh, you know, um, my dream is to have my, my cell phone just to go to them and say, okay, say to everyone, sort your packaging. You will be a champion. You're the champion of sorting. You're the champion of planet. Everyone here. So we need them. So I would love to do that. <laughs> and uh, we'll try to have them on board because they have that such an impact. And, and they, everyone knows we don't have the rights anymore. We know, we know what's happening. We know it's urgent. We know we need to act. Come on. So please, athletes, help us do that. Thank you. But I think more and more are willing to take action, which is good. Um, Georgina, I have a question. 
we, you just said how it can help to change people's behaviors, but can it also change how organizations are run? I mean, to change the way spawning events are built and designed, everything. Do you think it can change the behaviors? Well, this is what we hope, in one sense. As I said, when we started thinking all this, there, there was no book. Yeah. You know, there were no guidelines. We had guidelines to a lot of things, you know, but no guidelines on how to make more circular games. So this is why we created a new methodology. The idea, for example, of including in your contracts clauses about the second life of the goods. Um, this is easy, it's relatively easy, but yet it's not necessarily frequent in events. You know, and events are um, ephemeral by nature. So if there is one type of organization that should aim at being more circular, those are the ephemeral organizations, right? But there's no reason why other organizations wouldn't think about it. Because then the circle becomes a lot more virtuous. For example, all our uh, e electrical equipment, you know, technical equipment like computers or phones, they will be taken back by our sponsor and supplier. They will be reconditioned and put back into the market afterwards. You know, so, and this creates jobs as well, because there are people who will be doing those jobs as well, of putting all those things back, as opposed to putting them in the trash bin, right? Uh, when the London game ended, for example, they had 20,000 screens they had to define what to do with, right? So we are trying, and it's very, very, very tough, but we are trying to secure this second life for everything. But of course, the best Thing, the best waste, I would say, is the one you don't generate. So this is why it's important to try to uh, reduce up front the number of things. I'm going to give you another little example of Mayfoods. If there are journalists here in the room, they, they will understand. Um, in the guidebook on how to organize the games, uh, we were told every journalist needs three sockets, you know, basically, to plug three things per journalist. Well, guys, you're going to have only one. OK? <laughs> but that makes a lot of sockets less. You know, and we're talking about thousands of them uh, that will not need to have a second life. Right? Of course, this makes us some economies, which is never too bad. Uh, but also, it's, it's proving that uh, when you challenge a little bit uh, the requirements, what is known as needed, you say, well, do you truly need that? You know, and this is an exercise we are applying pretty much across the board. And of course, the packaging is one important part. Right? And this is what CTO is helping us so much. <laughs> but I think there is a, a question that we, I mean, probably many people are asking, how do, you measure, how do you measure success? And how can we make sure that the game will be a success? Well, there's, the first thing is that we can measure what packaging we have avoided and what packaging we have recycled. That we can measure. Yeah. Then, there are other things which are not necessary, I cannot put a figure on it, but for the companies, including the big companies, sponsors, fast consumer good companies, they are thinking how to reinvent the fact that they need to provide their, their products with no packaging through use, with less packaging, or you know, we how to recycle the packaging. And that's also an impact. And then the global impact is through the enormous uh, aura of the Olympic Games for every citizen. And uh, that is unmeasurable, but I think it's the biggest. That's why, again, thank you to make this on the top of the Olympic at, at last. Someone is saying, my games are going to be games respectful of the planet, unmeasurable, but so important. Thank you. Well, you know, that's, thank you. <laughs> um, for us, I would say it's, it's a number, but it's also something that is unmeasurable, right? A number is 80%. We're trying to secure that 80% of our consumption waste 
gets you know, valorized, used, uh, finds something uh, afterwards. And that is a lot. Uh, you know, people don't, maybe don't realize London had done fantastic gains. They've done a great effort in circular economy, and yet they reached 60%. So we're aiming for 80. We're 12 years later, a different mindset, different planet. We think, you know, we can get to 80. It's going to be very, very tough. Um, and then what is more difficult to measure is how many other organizations, entities, events are going to take on these ideas. Maybe you here are going to take some of it and apply it to your organization. And hopefully, this will create you know, an even bigger effect than the simple figures of our, of our uh, event. Thank you very much to both of you for this uh, great conversation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.